After the 2019 Canadian Grand Prix, where Pierre Gasly finished behind both Daniel Ricciardo and Nico Hülkenberg in the two Renaults, one thing for me has become very clear. That Pierre Gasly has had enough time to get it right at Red Bull, and because he hasn't, he must be dropped from Red Bull Racing. After what has been an awful start to 2019. And in today's video, I'm going to illustrate why that should happen and what exactly has happened for this situation to come to this point. And also look at who should replace Pierre Gasly at Red Bull. So if you want to know why Pierre Gasly should be dropped from Red Bull and who should replace him, make sure to check out this video. So when it comes to Pierre Gasly, let's first start off by looking at the seven races for him and also testing for him so far in 2019. Now, when it comes to testing and the first three races, we have covered this before in the previous Pierre Gasly video, which is down below in the description. So I'll quickly go through that now. So testing, not that quick from Gasly and had two big crashes. Not really good testing from Pierre Gasly. Australia, qualifying was bad and that was caused by the team. But in the race, he didn't really do that well. Bahrain, he was terrible from start to finish. Absolutely terrible considering the car he was in. And China was an improvement, but compared to his teammate, still it was not good enough. But then after China, of course, was Baku. Now Baku for Gasly wasn't too bad. Uh, of course, he did start from the pit lane because he did not go to the way bridge in practice two in Baku. And you have to say that was kind of his fault, but also the team's fault for not realizing that he was called to the way bridge by the FIA. So, yes, he can also blame his team, but he also must look in the mirror at that because it was clear when he came into the pit lane at Baku that he should go to the way bridge as there was a sign clearly showing for him to go to that exact area. His race was pretty good where he got to P6 after of course starting from the pit lane but then retired from the Grand Prix. That was for me Gasly's best drive of 2019 so far was Baku. Then in Barcelona he was consistently in the top six but was never really close to the drivers ahead and was arguably closer to Roman Grosjean and Kevin Magnussen in the Haas behind. So it wasn't that good of a weekend for Gasly. Again, he was in the top six, but it wasn't that memorable or special for Pierre. Then in Monaco, he deservedly got a penalty for blocking Roman Grosjean in qualifying. Then in the race, yes, he did gain uh, the three places he needed to to get back up to P5. But to be honest, he was expected to do that. And also his pace in qualifying, considering where his teammate was and how quick the Red Bull car was that weekend, I'm afraid Pierre Gasly just wasn't quick enough. He really should have been out qualifying Sebastian Vettel in the Ferrari at Monaco, considering again how much better the Red Bull car was compared to the Ferrari at the same Grand Prix. Then we come to Canada, where for me, pretty much all weekend, Pierre was terrible in practice. He looked as though he was comfortably in the midfield. Then in qualifying, yes, he out-qualified Valtteri Bottas, but got out-qualified by Daniel Ricciardo in the Renault. But after that, you're thinking maybe this is just a one-off and Pierre will easily beat him in the Grand Prix. Not only did Pierre not really massively challenge Ricardo in the Grand Prix, he got comfortably beaten by Ricardo's teammate Nico Hülkenberg. And also, whilst he was coming through the field, when Ricardo passed Lance Stroll, once Gasly tried to pass Stroll, one, he couldn't pass him and then actually started lapping slower than Stroll and fell quite a bit behind Lance Stroll in the racing point. And if Stroll was in a faster car, Stroll probably could have beat Gasly in the Grand Prix. That is how slow he was in Canada on race day. 
and finish comfortably behind Ricardo and Hulkenberg, which for me, considering the Red Bull car is definitely faster than the Renault, that is very, very embarrassing. But what are the exact reasons that have made him just so bad in the first seven races? Well, the first thing really is, compared to his teammate, just the lack of speed. And I think these next two stats, or stat graphics, will clearly illustrate that Pierre Gasly, especially in qualifying, has had shocking amounts of pace. Now, in Australia, again in qualifying, he was massively screwed over by his team and was 1.7 seconds down on what Max Verstappen did in Q3 and then ended almost a lap behind in the race. I can't confirm the exact distance because Gasly ended up being lapped and uh, Verstappen did not. So we don't know the exact uh, distance at the end of the Grand Prix. But in Bahrain, I'm sorry, Pierre Gasly had no excuses whatsoever. The team did everything they could for him, but he was 1.3 seconds slower in qualifying. That is incredibly embarrassing. Then in the race, he finished 52 seconds behind in the same car as Max Verstappen. Again, so, so embarrassing. In Shanghai, in terms of lap time, Things did improve, but he was still about a second off. Qualifying in P6 was Gasly behind Verstappen, who qualified in P5. And then in the race, finished over one minute behind. Now, Gasly did take an extra pit stop to go for the fastest lap, which he did get. But even if you take away the time for a pit stop that he took, still, that's what, 40 seconds worth of time? That's still... Way, way too big considering they are in the same car and the gap in terms of lap time should be a lot closer between them than it actually is. Then in Spain and Monaco, similar to Shanghai, in terms of the lap time difference between himself and Max Verstappen, things were improving but they still weren't quite good enough to say Red Bull's expectation or our expectations. For example, in Spain, he was a lot closer in qualifying, only three tenths of a second behind, even though Verstappen was P4 and Gasly was down in P6 and was only 12 seconds behind in the race. That was mostly to do with there being a safety car. And then in Monaco, he was four tenths of a second down and finished 4.1 seconds behind. And that is kind of to do with Max Verstappen's penalty, but also Gasly pitted more times, I believe than Max Verstappen did. And yes, in Canada, Pierre Gasly did out-qualify Max Verstappen, but that was nothing to do with Gasly being better than Verstappen. That was Red Bull completely destroying Max Verstappen's qualifying. That had nothing to do with Gasly being better than Max. If Max was in Q3 in Canada, Max could have finished up in P3 and definitely would not have been beaten by Daniel Ricciardo in qualifying. I can guarantee you that. So even though the time difference in terms of lap time between Verstappen and Gasly has been improving, it still isn't good enough, especially when you consider that Red Bull are still in a fight for second in the constructors with Ferrari at the moment. Also with Gasly this season, if you look at his 2019 so far, Considering that he's in a top car, he's never really been a part of that fight for the podium in any race this season. Again, Australia couldn't really do that much about it, but Bahrain, again, he was miles off. Even though in China and Spain and Monaco, he did qualify not that far off a podium position, he never really competed for that. He never really had the speed to be even close to that. And Again, that is nowhere near good enough if you are in a car that can compete for that type of position. And Pierre Gasly this season has basically been a midfield driver. He hasn't actually broke away from the midfield pack that he was a part of in 2018. The only top cars or drivers right now are Bottas, Hamilton, Verstappen, Vettel and Leclerc. Gasly 
is not a part of that, even though he is in a car that is a part of that top team bracket. He's still in the midfield in a top car. That is, that, that's shocking. That is a shocking performance. But it's not like we didn't see this type of thing coming because if you go back to 2018, even though he had great results like Bahrain and Hungary and races like that, he was so inconsistent in 2018. He didn't really show on a consistent basis that he was that good of a driver like Max Verstappen did when he was at Toro Rosso or what Sebastian Vettel did or Daniel Ricciardo or other younger drivers when they were at a smaller team and then went on to be great later on in their career or very good. He wasn't consistent. He had a good result, say one in every four races. And actually, if you look at the last few races of 2018, he was basically on par with Brendan Hartley, who, as we know, was terrible in 2018 and was mediocre at best. So if Gasly at times at the end of 2018 couldn't really outperform Brendan Hartley, doesn't really say that much or that great about Pierre. And I've never really thought that highly of him. I've never been that impressed. I've never thought the guy is ever going to be, say, a properly good driver or a very good or even a great driver. I've never thought he could be that. I've never seen that you know, stellar talent and speed in him. I've just never seen it at all, even though at Toro Rosso he did have a couple of great performances. And I think, honestly, last year at Toro Rosso, if he had a teammate like Alexander Alban or Danny Kvyat, who, of course, right now are at Toro Rosso, I think last year Gasly probably would have been on a par with them, if not been beaten by them, because... Brendan Hartley, you have to remember, was quite bad considering the car's performance. And I think Gasly's performance was kind of propped up because of how bad Hartley was. So because of all of that, I think Pierre should be dropped from Red Bull. And the only place he really should go and can go is back to Toro Rosso, where he will stay there for a couple of years and then move on to a different midfield team or... Leave the sport completely. But if Pierre Gasly is dropped, who should and who can replace him? Well, there's only two real choices, and that is Danny Kvyat and Alexander Albon. There's other drivers out there that have been mentioned as possibilities for that seat, but I just don't see those drivers actually getting into a Red Bull. One of those drivers, which is Nico Hulkenberg, I'll get onto that in a video next week as to why. That rumour is complete rubbish. But yeah, the only drivers, realistically, that can replace Gasly are Kvyat or Albon. And it's tough at the moment to say who absolutely does deserve to get into that Red Bull if Gasly is replaced. Because both Kvyat and Albon have been very good. They haven't really done anything that bad this season. For example, Danny Kvyat in almost every race weekend has been good. In Australia, did very well to score points ahead of Pierre Gasly in the Red Bull. Bahrain wasn't so good for him. China, of course, he was involved in that crash, which was not really um, a penalty for him, and I don't think was massively his fault. Baku, he was very good in qualifying. Dropped back in the race, I think, because the car was not performing that well on its tyres, and then was took out by Ricardo doing his very dumb reversing manoeuvre on him. But then from the Spanish Grand Prix on, Kvyat has been one of the best drivers in the midfield. In Spain, if he was a bit luckier with the pitting under the safety car, he could have finished at the front in the midfield in P7. He was that good in Barcelona. And then in Monaco, P7 was right on the gearbox of Carlos Sainz for most of that Grand Prix who finished in P6. So, very good there. And then Canada, again, very, very good and pulled off a great move on Carlos Sainz to get that final point and pulled off a great result for Toro Rosso, who I don't think were expecting to finish in the points in Canada. And Albon as well has been good in Melbourne. 
he wasn't great, but I think he had a you know a decent opening race in his F1 career in Bahrain. Of course, that was his first ever points finish where he was pretty good. China, he was the driver of the day after scoring points from the pit lane. Then in Baku, he was kind of okay. Didn't do that well in qualifying. In the race, he did kind of okay. The car, like with Kvyat, kind of hampered his performance in Baku. In Barcelona, was kind of unlucky not to finish in the points because if there were more laps remaining, even two more laps remaining in Barcelona, I think he would have nicked a point off of Romain Grosjean. In Monaco, he was right there with his teammate and was, for me, just as good. And then in Canada, even though he did have the turn one crash, I thought he was still pretty all right in Canada. But if you compare Danny Kvyat versus Alexander Albon right now, you'd have to say that Danny Kvyat is just about winning the battle. And I think these stats on screen do prove that. So in qualifying, Kvyat is 5-2 up. In the race, Kvyat is 4-3 up. And then combined, it is 9-6 in Kvyat's favour. It's not dominant in Kvyat's favour. It's still a close battle between Kvyat and Albon. And the battle between them has been good. But definitely right now, you'd have to say that Kvyat, if Red Bull were to drop Pierre Gasly right now, You'd have to say that Danny Kvyat is fully deserving to get into that seat ahead of Alexander Albon. Now, I think Red Bull would rather put Albon in their car because he's younger and he hasn't had a drive yet in the Red Bull car, which of course Kvyat has had. And it won't look that good on them, Red Bull, to have Kvyat back in their car. So they're kind of hoping, I think, that Albon can beat Kvyat over the course of 2019. And I think if Red Bull do keep Pierre Gasly at their team for the rest of the season, then it will be interesting to see who deserves to get that seat. I think you kind of have to wait until the very end of this season because I think the battle between Kvyat and Albon is going to be that close. And I think it could come down to the final race in terms of who has had the better season out of Alexander Albon and Danny Kvyat? But definitely, again, if Red Bull dropped Gasly right now, you would have to go for Kvyat because he has been better. But if Albon can improve his performance a bit and really challenge Danny Kvyat, it's going to be very interesting to see at Toro Rosso who comes out on top in what could be a very, very important battle in both Kvyat and Albon's respective careers. But guys, that is it for my video on why Pierre Gasly, for me, in my opinion, should be dropped from Red Bull. Let me know in the comments section, do you think Gasly should be dropped or do you think he should be kept on? And if you do think he should be dropped, let me know why. And if you think he should be kept, let me know why as well. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this and also like this video for more content like this. And also, don't forget, guys, the next video will be the podcast live on Saturday afternoon at 3 p.m. UK time where we will be previewing the 2019 French Grand Prix. So until Saturday afternoon, guys, it has been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.